As the Titanic made its way through the calm waters of the Antarctic Ocean on April 14, 1912, a beam of electric light cut through the darkness, illuminating a monstrous white shape. The ship's passengers were sound asleep as the fateful iceberg approached, ready to tear into the legendary vessel. Just two days before this tragic event, crew members had captured a photo of the giant glacier with an unusual elliptical shape. Through computer modeling, researchers were able to trace the iceberg's origin back to a small group of glaciers in southwest Greenland that formed from snowfall over 100,000 years ago. By analyzing data on winds and ocean currents from both 1912 and present day, researchers calculated the paths the glaciers took in past years and concluded that the iceberg was headed from Greenland to a location farther south than Cornwall. At the time of the collision, the iceberg weighed roughly 75 million tons, but had been slowly melting for months and weighed only 1.5 million tons when it sank the Titanic. Despite its diminished weight, it was still an enormous obstacle measuring 400 feet in length with up to 100 feet of its surface visible above the waterline. Some speculate that a rare supermoon event may have contributed to the iceberg's path, as it caused an unusually high tide that pulled the iceberg away from the glacier more quickly than usual. Additionally, the remains of the Titanic are being slowly consumed by a type of bacteria known as Halomonas titanicae, a rust-eating microorganism that may eventually consume the entire wreckage as it returns to nature through salt corrosion, ocean currents, and freezing temperatures. The youngest survivor of the Titanic was a two-month-old girl named Milvina Dean, who lived until 2009 and the age of 97. The ship had many love stories, too, including 13 couples who took the trip as a part of their honeymoon, but one couple, the owners of Macy's department store, chose to stay together until the end. The Titanic was a British luxury liner that set sail on its maiden voyage from Southampton, England to New York City on April 10, 1912. It was considered one of the largest and most luxurious ships of its time, carrying over 2,200 passengers and crew. However, tragedy struck just four days into the voyage when the ship hit an iceberg and sank, resulting in the deaths of over 1,500 people. The Titanic's sinking has also been the subject of many myths and legends. Some have speculated that the ship sank because of a mummy that was on board, while others believe that a novella published 14 years before the sinking predicted the whole event. Despite the various theories, it is clear that a combination of design defects, high speeds, and harsh conditions led to the ship's tragic demise. Even today, over a century later, the Titanic remains a poignant reminder of the dangers of hubris and the power of nature. The Titanic's collision with an iceberg is a tragedy that continues to captivate people's imaginations to this day. The ship's size, luxury, and supposed unsinkable nature, as well as the many human stories of heroism, love, and loss, all contribute to its enduring legacy. During its construction, the Titanic was hailed as one of the grandest and most opulent passenger ships of its time, boasting lavish amenities such as a grand staircase, a swimming pool, and a gymnasium. With advanced safety features, many believe the ship to be unsinkable. However, its tragic sinking during its maiden voyage in 1912 proved otherwise. It wasn't until 1985, when state-of-the-art sonar technology was employed, that the wreckage of the Titanic was rediscovered. Since then, thousands of artifacts have been recovered from the ship, many of which have been displayed in exhibits or sold at auctions. These objects, including jewelry, a life jacket, a restaurant menu, and even a sample square of carpet from a first-class stateroom, have captivated the public and served as a window into the lives of those who were on board the doomed vessel. Despite the Titanic's fame, there were other ships that sank under similar circumstances. A novella called Futility was published 14 years before the Titanic's voyage and featured a fictional ship called the Titan that was almost the same size and sank after hitting an iceberg in April. The Titanic's sinking also highlighted some of the design flaws and safety issues of the time. For example, the airtight bulkheads were not completely sealed, allowing water to flow among compartments and sink the vessel. The hull's rivets also had a high concentration of smelting residue, which could cause the metal to split apart. Additionally, the high sulfur content, cold temperatures, and high speeds caused the iron of the ship's rivets and the steel of the hull to become damaged. The steel shattered and the rivets easily popped out, causing the Titanic to sink faster than it should have. 
Had the ship hit the iceberg head-on instead of scraping it along the side, it may have remained afloat. One question raised is why the crew members did not have binoculars. This could have helped them spot the iceberg earlier and possibly avoid danger. However, all the binoculars on the Titanic were locked in a storage compartment, and only one crew member had the key. Unfortunately, this crew member had been transferred off the ship just before it set sail, and later claimed to have forgotten to hand over the key. Even without the binoculars, the ship might have had some time to change course and avoid the collision if the crew had gotten the warning. And that's the thing. Someone did warn them. About an hour before the incident, a ship that was relatively close to the Titanic, the SS Californian, had sent them a message to announce their ship had stopped because of dense field ice, and the warning never got to the Titanic's captain. Some even say it was because the radio operator didn't think it was that urgent. And later, the SS Californian said they didn't get the call for help from the Titanic because the radio operator was off duty. As the Titanic was sinking, the crew began to launch the lifeboats. But the problem was there weren't enough lifeboats for everyone on board. The ship had 20 lifeboats, which was enough to accommodate only about half of the people on board. At the time, the regulations required ships to carry enough lifeboats for only 1,178 people, even though the Titanic had more than twice that many on board. It was believed that having too many lifeboats would clutter the deck and spoil the view, which was more important to the wealthy passengers. As a result, many people had to brave the freezing waters, which were below the freezing point without any lifeboat or life jacket. But the Titanic was not just a story of tragedy. It was a marvel of engineering, the largest and most luxurious ship of its time. It was built by over 15,000 workers and took over two years to construct. The ship was over 880 feet long, 92 feet wide, and weighed over 46,000 tons. It had ten decks, three of which were reserved for first-class passengers, and was equipped with modern amenities, such as electric lights, a swimming pool, and a gymnasium. The Titanic set sail on its maiden voyage on April 10, 1912, from Southampton, England, with 2,223 passengers and crew members on board. Um, among them were some of the wealthiest people in the world, including John Jacob Astor the Seforth, Benjamin Guggenheim, and Isidore Strauss. The ship made stops in Cherbourg, France, and Queenstown, Ireland, before heading towards its final destination in New York City. Despite being known as an unsinkable ship, the Titanic had many weak spots, starting with its design. The airtight bulkheads weren't completely sealed on top, which allowed water to flow among compartments and ultimately sink the vessel. The ship's rivets and hull also had high sulfur content, making them susceptible to corrosion in cold temperatures and high speeds. When the ship collided with the iceberg, the pressure was so powerful that it separated two sides of the vessel, starting with the bottom structure. Some believe the hull's rivets had a high concentration of smelting residue, causing the metal to split apart. There were also concerns about the number of lifeboats available. The ship had slightly above the legally required amount, but they were nowhere near enough to save everyone on board. Only about 700 people were able to escape the sinking ship, leaving more than 1,500 to perish. One of the most fascinating stories surrounding the Titanic is that of the mummy. Some believe that the ship sank because of a curse associated with the mummy that was on board. The mummy was said to have been a priestess who lived in Egypt around 1000 BCE. Her burial place was hidden until the first half of the 19th century when a group of locals stumbled upon it. They disturbed her peace, and the mummy disappeared without a trace. A couple of decades later, a group of rich friends from England traveled to Egypt and found the empty mummy case. They decided to buy it, but the buyer disappeared before he could even obtain the case. All members of the group experienced some accidents, and the case changed its location several times until it, as some believe, coincidentally ended up on the Titanic. Some say the crew on the Titanic couldn't spot the iceberg on time because of an optical illusion. Atmospheric conditions from that night probably caused super refraction, and that's something that could have camouflaged the berg, because no one actually saw the glacier, until they were too close to it, to somehow maneuver out of the way. Not even a whole minute passed between the moment when they saw the iceberg and the one when the ship struck it. 37 seconds only and it took the Titanic two hours and 40 minutes to disappear below the ocean surface.
The ship was discovered in 1985, more than 70 years after the sinking. It lies nearly 13,000 feet under the surface of the Atlantic Ocean, broken in two halves. Why did it even split in two? No one knows exactly. Some think it happened because the water poured in when the ship collided with an iceberg. The pressure was so powerful it separated two sides of the vessel, starting with the ship's bottom structure. Others say it was because of the hull's rivets. They had a high concentration of slag smelting residue, and that's something that can cause the metal to split apart. Overall, the Titanic tragedy was caused by a combination of factors. Poor design, lack of binoculars, missed warnings, and difficult atmospheric conditions. The unsinkable ship sank, taking with it more than 1,500 lives and became one of the most tragic maritime disasters in history. Despite the tragedy of the Titanic, the ship's legacy continues to this day. Its sinking led to significant changes in maritime safety regulations, including the requirement for enough lifeboats for all passengers and crew, and mandatory 24-hour radio communication. Additionally, the sinking of the Titanic also captured the public's imagination and inspired numerous books, movies, and documentaries. One notable example is James Cameron's 1997 film Titanic, which became a cultural phenomenon and one of the highest-grossing films of all time. The movie brought renewed interest in the story of the Titanic and helped to create a new generation of Titanic enthusiasts. Cameron's numerous expeditions resulted in the collection of samples of the red rust that covers the Titanic. To the naked eye, this rust appears as a reddish-brown wax dripping all over the ship's ruins. However, Closer inspection revealed that these icicle-shaped formations were actually large colonies of microorganisms. These colonies were found to be iron-eating bacteria that pose a threat to the wreck. Surprisingly, the Titanic is now home to a greater biodiversity than when it was floating. It's interesting to note that when a ship sinks, it carries with it a significant amount of bacteria. If you stop to think of it, it makes sense. The surface of the planet has a different type of biodiversity than the bottom of the ocean. Hulks of ships are known to transport different species of marine life from one side of the globe to the other. It's logical that the biodiversity of the ocean floor is different from that of the planet's surface. Sunken ships are known to transport various marine species across the globe. But what's surprising is that this also happens vertically. When a ship sinks, it brings with it a plethora of new bacteria to the ocean floor. The iron-eating bacteria that now inhabit the Titanic's remains did not previously exist there. The iron-eating bacteria that now inhabit the Titanic's remains did not previously exist there. While they may not thrive in the harsh ocean conditions, they have found a way to survive. These microorganisms have become a threat to the wreckage, consuming up to 220 pounds of iron per day. There have been concerns about how long the Titanic's remains will survive, with some speculating that it may only last another 50 years. However, according to Cameron's research team, the wreck is not in any immediate danger of disappearing. The Titanic may be the most well-known shipwreck, but it's not the only one with a fascinating story. The fleet of Kublai Khan, a large naval force commissioned by the Mongol ruler in the 13th century, is another example. The fleet was intended to travel to Japan and establish the Mongols' dominance in the region, but in 1281 it encountered bad weather and was severely damaged, with many ships being destroyed. Legend has it that a massive typhoon, later known as the Kamikaze, or Divine Wind, tore through the fleet, sent by higher powers to protect Japan from the Mongols. The mystery of its disappearance still remains unsolved, but Asian archaeologists in the 1980s reportedly discovered the wreckage or parts of it by digging across the site and studying the remains of the ships near the Amari Bay. This shipwreck is considered to be a significant archaeological discovery because it provides insights into the level of preparedness of the Mongols when it comes to their ships. The tragic story of the RMS Empress of Ireland, a British passenger ship that operated until May 1914, is another example of a devastating shipwreck. The vessel was en route from Quebec City to Liverpool when it collided with the Norwegian Collier SS Storstad in heavy fog off the coast of Rimouski, Quebec. The collision created a large hole in the side of the Empress of Ireland, causing it to rapidly take on water and sink. Many of the crew and passengers were caught unprepared and unable to evacuate in time, resulting in the loss of 1,012 lives. This disaster is regarded as one of the worst maritime collisions in Canadian history. 
The rescue efforts were hindered by poor visibility and the damage to many of the lifeboats, rendering them unusable. Only 465 people survived the sinking, and the Storstad helped rescue many of them, despite its own damages. The sinking of the Empress of Ireland was a national tragedy in Canada, which led to the implementation of changes in maritime safety regulations and the establishment of a Coast Guard. The iron-eating bacteria that now inhabit the Titanic's remains did not previously exist there. While they may not thrive in the harsh ocean conditions, they have found a way to survive. These microorganisms have become a threat to the wreckage, consuming up to 220 pounds of iron per day. There have been concerns about how long the Titanic's remains will survive, with some speculating that it may only last another 50 years. However, According to Cameron's research team, the wreck is not in any immediate danger of disappearing. The Titanic may be the most well-known shipwreck, but it's not the only one with a fascinating story. The fleet of Kublai Khan, a large naval force commissioned by the Mongol ruler in the 13th century, is another example. The fleet was intended to travel to Japan and establish the Mongols' dominance in the region, but in 1281 it encountered bad weather and was severely damaged, with many ships being destroyed. Legend has it that a massive typhoon, later known as the Kamikaze, or Divine Wind, tore through the fleet, sent by higher powers to protect Japan from the Mongols. The mystery of its disappearance still remains unsolved, but Asian archaeologists in the 1980s reportedly discovered the wreckage or parts of it by digging across the site and studying the remains of the ships near the Amari Bay. This shipwreck is considered to be a significant archaeological discovery because it provides insights into the level of preparedness of the Mongols when it comes to their ships. The tragic story of the RMS Empress of Ireland, a British passenger ship that operated until May 1914, is another example of a devastating shipwreck. The vessel was en route from Quebec City to Liverpool when it collided with the Norwegian Collier SS Storstad in heavy fog off the coast of Rimouski, Quebec. The collision created a large hole in the side of the Empress of Ireland, causing it to rapidly take on water and sink. Many of the crew and passengers were caught unprepared and unable to evacuate in time, resulting in the loss of 1,012 lives. This disaster is regarded as one of the worst maritime collisions in Canadian history. The rescue efforts were hindered by poor visibility and the damage to many of the lifeboats, rendering them unusable. Only 465 people survived the sinking, and the Storstad helped rescue many of them, despite its own damages. The sinking of the Empress of Ireland was a national tragedy in Canada, which led to the implementation of changes in maritime safety regulations and the establishment of a Coast Guard. The ship remains at the bottom of the St. Lawrence River and has become a popular destination for diving enthusiasts. Despite all the shipwreck tragedies, even the story of the Titanic has become a part of popular culture, inspiring countless books films, and TV shows. It serves as a reminder of the fragility of human life and the power of nature. The legacy of the Titanic will undoubtedly continue to captivate people for generations to come.